Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a bit of a tutorial for you today. Lots of different people want lots of different things, but I thought I'd do something that's a bit interesting and exciting, and you know, and there's tons of, there's lots of different levels to it. As you can tell by the title, I'm doing a tutorial on flip resets slash air dribbles along those lines, because basically they, they work off of each other a lot of the time. Now, an air dribble, I don't know what you guys would consider an air dribble, but me, I think if you're getting at least three touches in the air, I'd consider that an air dribble. I mean, this tutorial isn't going to be super in-depth or really detailed just because the basic understanding of these mechanics isn't difficult to un like understand what to do, but the actual application of it, it will take a lot of time, which doesn't just happen in a tutorial, but I can teach you the best ways to you know go about this and start learning it it won't help you if you put tons of hours in learning how to do it the wrong way or just a way that isn't useful to you so to set up air dribbles I mean you can go off the ground but we're, we're not we're not doing that today so you want to take it up the wall like so you want to jump off the wall with the ball like this now the hardest part about this is the setup so you want the ball rolling at the right speed and right height. You know, you don't want to roll the ball so that it's... Let me just get it here. You don't want to roll it like that because you're not really going to be going far with it. So you want a high roll on the wall. And that's really important what I just did there. You, you need to jump just as you hit the ball. Because that way you keep the same momentum as the ball. You don't have to use a lot of boost to go and follow it like this, even though you can. You can do that but it's a lot easier for you if you jump when you hit the ball and it, even I'm not air rolling here I got about four to five touches on the ball just because I jumped at the same time and my car is facing the, the ball still so that's as much as I'm really gonna say about air dribbles there's just a high skill ceiling on them a lot of different things you can do with them but the main one we're focusing on today is uh, flip resets so you get sort of one touch Okay, and I didn't get the flip reset there because you know it, it is really difficult. It's really difficult. But mainly, what I wanted to show you was how to set up plays off the wall with that with that pop, popping the ball off the wall and jumping with it. Because with that, I now go in. I can go into a flip reset like so, and uh, or the air dribble. Or the air dribble. <laughs> so, with flip resets, you get a reset when all four of your wheels touch touch the ball at the same time. And when you reset on the ball, it will give you a dodge. Another dodge to use midair. And now, flip resets, in my opinion, are probably... It's probably my favourite mechanic in the game. Just because, see that, you can chain it into two... It, the whole the mechanic itself is just so unpredictable for a defender. It's one of the best things you can have in your offensive arsenal when you're attacking. Cause it's so unexpected and there's just too many outcomes for the defender to really know what you're up to. So I can flip reset it there and take it low and not even use the flip reset. Which honestly gets a lot of people. As a lot of you might recognize the squishy goal from uh, I, I actually don't know what season it is. It's the famous squishy goal where he goes for the ceiling shot, fakes the first one, scores it over the second guy. It's a very difficult shot but you get the idea that with a flip reset when you get it your opponents pretty much has to anticipate you using the flip because with the flip reset you can get a lot of height on the ball after using the dodge. So as a defender you usually have to anticipate the flip reset use so in my opinion when you're starting off you want to you want to boost towards the ball and right at the last second release your boost and you want to rotate your car so that the bottom of it is gonna be smacking into the ball now at first you don't even need to score it right but if you can consistently get that flip reset then you can move on to further ways to apply it in different ways. But you really just want to practice from any awkward way, just having to like smack the bottom of your car into the ball. 
I pop it off, I boost, get the bottom of it on. See, there I didn't get it because my uh, my back right wheel wasn't touching. So you want to be perfectly in the center, and then you can go into an air dribble, whatever, whatever you want. Now, these two mechanics will increase your offense by insane amounts. When you air dribble and you get your pop off the wall, you want to just be tapping your boost little by little, like so. And this is called feathering, if you didn't know. And what this does is, it, it means that you don't get one really strong touch into the ball and lose possession of it in the air. Because it's very easy to do so. I'll show you what happens when you just hold boost and try and... I get about two touches because after I've just pushed it really far away from me, I have to then use way more boost to catch up to it again and even do anything. So you want to be boost things a lot in small intervals. So hopefully this tutorial is enough to, you know, make you want to go learn these mechanics and give it a go in free play. And uh, also I saw a lot of people requesting my camera settings and you know, my, my controls and stuff like that. So I'll go over that quickly. For my camera settings, I have FOV 110. I think this is quite the standard thing to have. People have usually between 100 and, 100 and 110. Uh, distance, 270. My height is 100. Angle is negative 4. Stiffness is 0 0.4. My swivel speed is 5.5. Yeah, that, I think that controls uh, this, this camera to help you look around. So I'm just letting you, uh, letting you know, these bottom two settings here, this is completely your, really, like, this is really, really your preference. I mean, camera settings are pretty much your preference, but these settings I have are pretty in the middle for everyone. Like, anyone sh can probably use these camera settings and still play as well as they usually do. But these two are really up to your preference. I mean, if you can't see what's going on when it's at this speed, you can just take it down to like two. And you know, it's 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 much it's much slower, and maybe you prefer that. It's completely up to you. And the transition speed is the speed of which your camera switches to and back ball cam. Now I think 1.5 is just it works really well for me. You know, when I have uh, the ball on my hood and I flick it, I drive away, and I can quickly switch back to ball cam and off ball cam when I want to grab boosts. I think it's just a really solid speed. Now for my controls. My steering and aerial sensitivity is 1.8. Controller dead zone is 0.15. Dodge dead zone is 0.75. Now for my bindings, I am a very default player, as you'll see. Uh, this is all default I'm pretty sure my error I put on left bumper I think by default it's let me just check is it X it is on X by default uh, my ball cam is Y rear view I click in my right stick which is default and uh... right I just made the mistake of resetting all of my key binds so uh, just give me a sec all right, I think I fixed it. <laughs> I think I've put everything uh, back on where it needs to be. So I've arrow right and arrow left. Now these are really important uh, if you want to take your game to the next level. Very, very difficult to use and will feel so awkward. If you thought driving on the ground was hard enough, this will really throw you out of your comfort zone when you first start using it. It did for me anyway, and it does for a lot of people. You might be a natural. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so what what these do, so instead of just the free arrow, which I have on left bumper, the free arrow just means I can do it in any direction while I'm holding it down. But arrow right means I only will spin in the direction of, of the arrow key that I've selected. So right bumper, I have arrow right. And left arrow, I have it on my left stick. Now, a lot of people will think, how how do I still move in the game? How, how am I able to drift, jump, and boost all at the same time? 
even though they're default, it's because I actually play Claw. A lot of people will <laughs> cringe at that fact, but I do play Claw. I used to be a FPS player on console, so that's why. But, you know, it works for me. It's, uh, it's comfortable. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not going to change anything anytime soon. Now, the reason I have arrow left on left stick is for half flip. Yeah, just let me know how you found this tutorial. I know it's pretty quick and not that in-depth, but hopefully it was enough for you to understand a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Just let me know what mechanics you want me to do a tutorial of. I'll, I'll probably be able to do a tutorial on anything you shoot my way. Uh, I'll leave the Discord in the description. If you want to hop in there, I have a, um, a video suggestions channel that you can, you know, you type anything you want in there. And I will probably cover it, you know. Uh, the more ideas, the better for me. So I can just keep producing content for you guys. But again, I just want to say a massive thanks to the response to my commentary video. I'm going to be doing another one next week. I'll probably do 1v1. I think that's better. Just pure, pure gameplay, me talking over what I'm thinking during 1v1. But I do think the average score for commentary on the last one was 7 out of 10. Or 7 out of 10. So, uh, you know what? That is a win in my books. That's a win. I was expecting 4s, but you guys gave it, gave it a 7. So, that's crazy. Thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I stream on Twitch three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have that link in the description to my Twitch. If you want to come hang out with me, we can have a chat. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.